help people. You know, learned a lot of lessons, you know, because of this plan, because of this field, because of Boston Common. The Freedom Rally is my rage every year. I, I like to get down to festivals, but this is, this is activism, civil disobedience, res semi-respectful civ civil disobedience, but it's civil disobedience. So smoke pot in public, smoke pot in front of cops, smoke pot in front of your uptight family members that don't smoke pot. I mean, because this planet, it cures cancer. You know, shrink, shrunk my friend Glenn's tumor. Like, do it however you gotta do it, get it however you can get it, as long as it's clean and it's right. Look into things like suppositories that make you cringe, but it, it'll, you know, it'll do the trick. And find a way to kick down. If you're making money off this plant, and a couple years ago, you know, you were selling shoes or something like that, go find some of these people that, like, the weed man that just went off stage. That guy was just in prison for all this. Straight up, now, not 10 years ago, now. There's still stuff to protest, man, and it, it's not gonna stop. A life well lived will live on long after the person themselves. We honor and remember Kyle Correo, who is affectionately known as Elmo. He lived a life in service of others, and that is his legacy. From honorably serving in the United States Army to becoming a steward and a pioneer coast to coast in the cannabis community. Our humble hero not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk, as you could find him protesting at the State House in support of safe access for patients, as well as teaching free classes for veterans on a myriad of topics, from cultivation to hash making, rosin pressing, and everything in between. And in his free time, you could find him growing his beloved moose and lobster. Kyle did whatever it took to ensure that those that needed cannabis got the cannabis that they needed. He wasn't necessarily concerned with legality as much as morality, and he became a caregiver even if it meant breaking the law, because breaking those laws meant saving those lives. Our cannabis Robin Hood took part in both civil disobedience and random acts of kindness. He had a smile that you could spot in a crowd and a heart as big as his wanderlust for life. From the state house to the stage, from California to Maine, the countless lives he impacted will continue to honor his legacy by helping those in need performing civil disobedience when necessary, and of course, finding ways to kick down. Kyle knew the importance of planting seeds to trees that you will never know the shade of. Through his actions, through his words, and especially through his example, there is so much to emulate. The world will never be the same with him gone, but it is absolutely better because he was here. Oh, everybody's just gonna do what you do. You know, get access to cannabis. If you don't have it, break the law. Find somebody that lives in a place like Oregon or Washington or California that has more reasonable laws and have them ship it to you. Who gives a shit? You know? <laughs> Craft cannabis is great, but until New England has industrial sized dep houses, you're gonna have a black market. You know? Clean cannabis is the goal. Clean hash. Clean everything. You know? Fuck the establishment. Fuck all these people that are like the big money coming in here and buying up dispensaries and shit. We don't want Wal we don't want Walmart in charge of things, man. We want local cultivators. Right? We like we want the the people that grow the best grass for their grass to be in shops. Not industrial sized beasters days garbage. We're smoking marijuana in civil disobedience. Smoke weed with people, smoke weed with your friends. Smoke weed with people who aren't your friends. Boston Freedom Rally. Here, and thank all of you for coming out here and practicing safe civil disobedience. You know? And we're going after psychedelics next. <laughs> Give it up for Elmo! He's gonna make sure you're lit for the rest of your life.